Hi there folks, if you're looking for a way to trigger a flow on a document or an item on your terms rather than when it's uploaded or when it's modified, maybe you just need a button in your document library or list. So if we take this as an example, if I click on the send an email button, over on the right hand side our flow run window opens and if I supply an email address like so, when I hit the do it button it runs my flow and it sends me an email like so. And I have that file now attached to my email. So if you're sending out invoices, user guides on your terms when you're ready rather than when it's uploaded, this is exactly what you're looking for to save time with some simple automation that you can build. So let's go and take a look at how we do that. So I'm going to kick things off from a SharePoint site and I'm already in a list here and there are two items. And today I'm going to show you how you can build a flow that you can then attach to a column and have a button for each item, which will then enable you to select an item, press the button, trigger the flow for that item. Exactly the same thing can be done with documents in a document library too. If I jump across onto a document library, you can see I have already set up a button under a column called Cloud Flow. And if I click on Send Email, over on the right hand side, we get a pop up that is going to send an email to a customer. That is going to trigger my flow. And the flow has an input parameter for an email address, so I can supply an email address. Or I could pick up the email address from a column if I have metadata, and then that will be passed to the flow, the flow will run, and in this scenario, I'll send out an email with the file as an attachment. So if you're sending out user guides or invoices, generating files, you want to be in control of when you send those emails, then you can do that with a Power Automate flow and a button embedded on your SharePoint site. Now the alternative to a button, if I click on this ellipsis here, is there's an integrate button and Power Automate. So you can create a flow using templates or in fact build your own, but any flow that you build and you want to access via this integrate button must be built in the default environment. Today I'm going to build my flow in a different environment and show you how we can attach that to this button on our list or document library. So if I jump back across onto my SharePoint list, I'm going to add in a column, a text column, and it's going to be called Cloud Flow. The name is entirely up to yourselves. I'll save that and then I'll click on the drop down, go to column settings, format this column, and what we're actually going to be doing is adding in some JSON for formatting this column. And you'll see already there are some JSON included. Now at this point you might be thinking, this is way beyond my knowledge. Well, the good thing is there is a document and I'll include this in the description. And it includes some sample JSON and the primary purpose of this is to create a button that when you click, it runs a flow. So I can copy that into my clipboard, back over onto SharePoint, and if I overwrite the existing schema that's there, paste that in with a control V and save, we'll see we now have a button that says send to my manager. Now throughout this demo, I'm gonna show you how we can further develop this button and also enable and disable it based on the status that we see on this item within our list. So at the moment, my status is new customer, I'll have the button disabled, and then only when it hits ready will I enable us to click on that flow. And then upon running that flow, I'm going to use the flow to set the status to info sent so we can get an update on that list to see that we've already sent the details for that item. So back into the JSON that's been included, there is an ID for a flow, and we need to update that with the flow that we build. So let's jump across over onto Power Automate and build our first flow. So over on Power Automate, I'm going to build an instant flow, and the trigger I'm going to use is based on for a selected item. You'll see that there's also for a selected file. So I'm going to, first of all, build a flow for the selected item in a list and show you how we can attach it to a SharePoint document library instead. So with the flow now created, the first thing I need to do is to select the SharePoint site, September 2024, the list, which is based on my customers, and then all I want to do at this point is to send an email. So I'll search for send an email. And with that action in place, I'm going to send an email to both myself and also a customer. So at this point, I'm just going to select my email address like so. The subject will be test. For the body, if I want to include any dynamic content, you'll see that I have up to seven different dynamic values, none of which include the status column. So if I do want to get additional 
data back from this list item, I do need to add in another action. So if I go and add in an action to get the item, if we expand the available actions, there will be an action along here somewhere that will be in fact get item. So there we go, we can get the item, that'll get all the metadata for that particular item. I can again select the SharePoint site, I can select the list and insert the dynamic ID for the ID that's been selected. Now back into send an email, I can go and start using some of that metadata that's come through from the get item. If I use the dynamic content here, and we can see we've got far more data that has come through now. So for the purpose of this demo, I'll include the title, which is in fact the name on my list, and I will also include the status value. Now finally, at the end, what I'd like to do is I'd like to update the status. So when I run the flow, I'm going to send an email and we will update the item. So I'll go to update item, choose that action again, set the site and the list in with the ID. And then if I click on show all, we can go to the status value and we can set info sent. And just before I save the flow, I'm going to give it a name, send email to customer. So we now have a flow built based on for a selected item. It's going to get the item which will retrieve the additional metadata. We'll send an email just to myself at this point with the title column and the status value, and then we'll update the item with the new status value of info sent. Now, in order to connect this flow up to our button that's in our list, if I go back onto the details pane, there is an export button, and in that export button, there is a get flow identifier. If we use the click to copy, we can get that flow ID, jump back across onto our SharePoint list, and overwrite this ID that I've highlighted. So I'll paste that in like so, hit save, and that is our flow now connected to the button that's been added to our list. So now when I click on send to manager over on the right hand side, the run window pops up. Because this is the first time I've run this flow as me, I have to make sure I've got connections to both SharePoint and Outlook. And then when I hit continue, I'm able to run the flow. And when I hit run flow, if I jump back over to the, over to the details pane and do a refresh, we can see that that flow is successfully run. Jumping over into my email, we can see that I have that test email with the title, which was Damien Bird, and the status, which was new customer. And then if I jump back across onto my list, and if I just do a quick refresh, we can see now the status has been set to info sent. Now, if we look at the setup of the document library, I have a button that says send email. Back over on my customer list, I have the default text of send to manager, which of course is the sample that I got from the Microsoft documents. But if I pop open Copilot over on the right hand side, I have a prompt that I created earlier. I basically want to create a button to SharePoint to trigger a power automate flow. I want the button to be visible if the choice value, in this case called status, is equal to ready, and the button will be green with the text send email when it's ready, and it'll be red with not ready when the status is not ready. So I'll hit submit, and we'll see if it can generate me some JSON formatting for our SharePoint column. So we can see that we have a sample schema. I'm going to copy that, again, go into my cloud flow, into column settings and format this column, I'll close down Copilot, we'll bring across the formatting and the payload, and if I highlight that all with Control A, I can then use Control V to paste in my new code, and I need to make sure that I update that flow ID with the value that I copied before. So already in my clipboard, which is Windows V, I have that flow ID. Now if I hit save, we can see that this is now updated to a button that says not ready. I'll close the formatting. If I try and select the button, unfortunately, it is allowing me to run the flow and this is not the desired outcome that I'm looking for. As another test, if I go and edit the specific item and change it to ready and hit save, we do see that the button changes to green and the text changes to send email. And again, if I click on it, it opens up our tab over on the right hand side. But ideally, I don't want the flow to be able to be run if the status is not ready. So jumping back into Copilot, let's try and iterate this code. What I'm going to ask Copilot now is, 
this isn't working perfectly, the button is active even when the status is not ready, can we make the action params blank if not ready and the flow ID when ready? So we can see here we have this property called action params which includes the ID. Ideally, I would like something like an if statement like we have for the text content and the background color of the button so that if the status is equal to ready, we use the flow ID and if it's equal to anything else, it's empty. So I'll run this and see what we get back. So we can see that Copilot has understood my instructions, is added in a very similar if statement based on the status of ready. If I copy that into my clipboard, go back into my Cloudflow column settings and format this column, I'll close down Copilot again and bring across the code view. Control A, Control V, and, and I can copy in my flow ID again and hit save. So back into my list, if I try and hit the not ready button, all that it's allowing me to do is to edit that item. If I select the send email, we can now see that the flow is triggered. And if I try and edit Alex so that his status is now ready, we can see that the send email button appears. And when I click on that and click on run flow, my flow is run. If I refresh my list, we can see that the info has been sent and it's no longer ready. I can't select that button anymore. And if I go into my email, I have received my email about Alex Wilbur with the status at the point of sending that email. So if we now move across onto our document library, I want to be able to demonstrate how you can actually send attachments, but also how you can include an email address when you click the button. So when I click the button like so, over on the right hand side, we now have an input parameter for an email address and we can choose if we want to send this to one or many people. So next I'm gonna create a brand new flow. It's gonna be based on a manual trigger for a selected file this time round. I'll go ahead and populate my SharePoint site and this time round my document library. I'm gonna add in an input because I would like to pass in an email address. You can see you've got lots of potential options here for passing in data that will be captured when the flow is run from your document library or indeed your list but I'll choose email and then we can use that email address dynamically. So if we now go ahead and add in another action, I'd like to get the file content because I'd like to include that file as an attachment in the email. And whilst there is a get file content action, if I go to see more, you can see we have the get file content. Now I can choose the SharePoint site, but when it comes to the file identifier and I choose dynamic content, you'll see that there is a property here called file identifier, but this isn't actually the dynamic value you're looking for. This is the ID of the file, which is the list ID. We want the file identifier, which is part of the file name and part of the document library path. So in order to get the dynamic value that this particular action is looking for, if I go into the plus just above the get file content and add an action, I want to get file properties. And this is very much like the get item that I did in the first flow with the list items. So by using get file properties, I can get additional properties about that file. Again, populating the SharePoint site and the document library. But here, the ID is the ID from the trigger. And as a result of getting the file properties, when I go into file content and into the dynamic content for file identifier and type in ID, we'll see that the get file properties, as well as having the original ID of the item, it also has a value called the identifier. So if you're getting errors whilst building this, make sure you've got the identifier and not the ID. So that now allows us to get the file content and what I'd like to do is send an email. So we'll look for send email and I'll choose the V2 action. And here I can have both fixed email addresses, but also dynamic based on the value that's provided from the trigger. Now, if all I want is the email address from the dynamic content, then I can switch the advanced mode and I can choose the dynamic content. And if I search for email, we'll see that I have that input parameter called email. If I also wanted to include myself, I could either include me in the two, or if I go to show all, I can also include me as part of the CC. So if I want a copy of the email that's been sent out, I can choose my email address and I can see that I'll also be CC'd in this email that's generated from our flow. The subject, 
here is your attachment. In the body, we can use the dynamic content from the get file properties. So again, if I want to use the title, etc., we have access to all that metadata that you might have. And I'll include that title just for the demonstration. But if we want to add an attachment, you'll see we have add new item. In here, I need to include the name. So again, into dynamic content, we can search for the name. There are two places I can get that name, either from the get file properties action or from the original trigger. So either are fine. I'll go with the trigger on this occasion. And then the file content is of course going to be based on the get file content action. We can see we have file content here and that is our flow built. So again, I'll give it a name, send the customer an email and save it. And if I use the back button onto the details pane into export, get that flow identifier again, copy it back over onto my SharePoint document library on the drop down for the column, column settings, format this column. And if I update this flow identifier here with a control V and hit save, it will now be ready to send an email based on that new template flow that I've just built. Now, the other thing that I found quite interesting was I can actually change the text on the button. So I've got do it rather than run. And you can also change the header text when someone clicks on the, the button. So here we have the header text with send email to customer. If you want to learn more about that, again, on the documentation, you can see it called out here, header text and run flow button text. If you click on this link here and scroll a bit further down the documentation, you'll see that there is an example called out here with the header text and the flow button text. So jumping back across onto our document library, when I hit the send email button now, the flyout appears over on the right hand side. We can see the text, send an email to customer. Because of the first time I've run the flow, it's asking for me to create these connections. I can hit continue. And you'll note at the bottom here, we have the text do it on the, on the button. I can now include my other email address, which is not in my domain, but if I hit enter, it accepts that email address. You can add in multiple email addresses if you require. And then when I hit the do it button, there is a ping in my email. Here is your attachment. We can see it sent it to my email address. It CC'd myself. And if I open up that file, we have the user guide for ABC. Now as a final bonus for anyone that's still watching, if you want to know how to make fields optional or required, all you've got the option to do here is delete a field, but maybe you've got multiple input parameters that you've added and you want to make some optional, some required. If we toggle back across into the classic designer, we can go to the trigger and onto the ellipsis and you'll see here, we can either make the field optional or make the field required. And the consequence of that is when you run your flow from your item or your document, values that are required will have a little asterisk. And if I try and run the flow without completing that, you can see that the email is required. But likewise, if you've got optional, then if you don't provide any information, your flow will still be able to run. And so that marks the end of the demonstration. Other ideas that I've had as a result of building this is maybe you could generate a draft email rather than an actual email and then edit that flow before sending it. And I have a video on exactly that process. If you want to generate a draft email, then maybe go and check out my other video, which is included in the description. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again sometime soon. Cheers.